Hey everybody, it's uh, just me, Autogar, here for Kaiju Sensei Ultra Ranger. Lane would be here, but unfortunately, uh, he's currently underneath the blankets right now, playing Kingdom Hearts 3. I question how he's doing that when he's in the living room. I have my ways. Lane, come out of there. No, it's cold outside. Lane, we're in a house. Doesn't matter, it's still cold. You know, he's not actually wrong, it is cold in this house. You look like a baby. A big, stupid, ultra baby. What a woke call. Eiji Tsuburaya, the man who created something from nothing. Godzilla, Ultraman. But when those who don't give his franchises enough credit, these podcasters will do it justice. For they are... Kaiju Sentai! Ultra Ranger! Lover of all things, Ultraman. Ultra Yellow Cancer, gone. The other son of Goliath, Ultra Pink Caster, late! Spreading the love on one of Japanese beloved franchises. Kaiju Sentai! Ultra Ranger! Shrek! Baby Wanna Gomra? Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger, the podcast where we talk about Ultraman's past, present, and future, Godzilla, and all kaiju in between. I am your host, Ultra Yellow Caster Autogar. And I am your co host, Ultra Pink Caster Lane Rose Pink Rosa. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. It's fucking can winter. It's can winter in Canada. It's fucking awful, and we're freezing our asses. Yeah, it is so cold. Uh, when I went outside today, my gloves actually froze over. Yeah. I could not bend my fingers. Nope. I thought I was going to lose my fingers. <sighs> it's going to suck going to work tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah. And, and the thing, I have to travel home this weekend. Mm. Hopefully, they, they said Sunday it will be the warmest day at 2. Oh, fuck it. I'm probably just going to Uber to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so this will probably like be a semi-short one, but we're going to try to be as lengthy as we can about the episodes we talked about. Yeah, since, so unfortunately, episodes 21 through 25 are yet to be released of, Rube. of Ultraman Rube. Yeah. So luckily we decided to, luckily we had another show to watch, and that is SSS Gridman. SSS Gridman. SSS Gridman the anime. There you go. The Grand Anime. The Grand Anime. <laughs> That's the title of the episode, man. The Grand Anime. The Grand Anime. It's the great, great father of anime. Wait, that's the guy who made Astro Boy. The Grand. Uh, the Grand Anime. <laughs> oh, that's actually. No, because it, no, it says Grand Anime. You, gotta, you just gotta put Grand, like Grand, and then I M E. Like that. Yeah. Grand anime. Grand anime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yes, we're talking about episode four of SSS. S. S. Grand anime. <laughs> <laughs> but first, let's talk about some news. Uh, first bit of news is that I kind of forgot about this, and there was no other post on like the four major sites I looked it up for. Oh no! So when I go through the news, I only check four sites. And that's J Fusion. Toku Nation, the Tokusatsu Network, and then Orin's Range. Which is apparently still under construction. It's been like that for fucking like five years. Yeah, I think it's going to be like that forever. So I had to hop on to a site called Bandai Hobby Site, which I think this is just the actual site for stuff for stuff made from Bandai. These suits are fucking dope, man. Yeah, so the first news article is about the figure rise... Mm -hmm. Ultraman suit version 7.5, aka Ultra 7's uh, outfit from the Ultraman manga. And the guy's got a fucking katana. It's so cool. And he like has it at his waist, and it's just that's a nice suit. Yeah, y you gotta love, y you gotta love this Ultraman manga, man. I can't wait to fucking talk about it on the show. The manga or the anime? The anime. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's coming out on Netflix in April. Yeah, April 1st. Same with Neon Genesis, uh, ne Neon Genesis Evangelion. Ooh. Yeah, I think it's like the same day. Cool. 
they both come out. And uh, like a sequel anime or like the original? What? Of Evangelion. Oh no, it's the original. Oh okay. I like guess the original anime, and then I think the two movies. God, funny story about that. So like, I'd never seen Evangelion before. So at an anime club, uh, Raven decided, Redcaster decided to put on one of the mo- like one of the movies. So I watched it. No context of what Evangelion is, and I just sat there after I watched it. I was like, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> I have no idea what fucking happened. Like, one of my friends is like, have you ever watched the show? I'm like, no! And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, you must be so confused. Yeah! Why was that guy choking her? <laughs> that was weird. It's like when people went to go see a Glass without seeing, uh, without seeing Unbreakable. Yeah, yeah one, of my, one, of my, uh, one of my co-workers was going to go see it, and he's like, yeah, I'm thinking about going to see a Glass. I'm like, better watch Unbreakable and split first, or you're not going to understand anything. Oh, there were some kids that like, first day we had it, they were like, oh, yeah, man, it's a split sequel. And not, not even, like, I turned on being like, an Unbreakable sequel. And they're like, what's Unbreakable? Yeah. I'm like, the movie that this whole thing's based on? Go watch Glass. It was a really good movie. But first, go watch Unbreakable and Split. Yeah, those are also really good movies. Yes, even on their own, they're really good movies. Yeah, like, they're probably Shmama Sama's best. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this out, this uh, figure... So it's a figure rise, which means it is a model kit, much like the uh, common rider figure rise figures. Figure rise figures, figure rise figures, figure rise figures. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you say figure to rise. <laughs> figure to rise. <laughs> figure to rise figures. Figure to rise. Oh, oh my god, it even has a fucking. Alright, so the accessories that it comes with it comes with a one spacium sword, which is his katana, a sheaf for the spacium sword. A knife. A knife. Two. And the original weapon, in quotes, eye slugger. Yeah, which, in which he uses oh, it the same way Zero does. Oh, it's a bat lift. No, but it's, it's the Zero slugger that Zero uses. Because doesn't, doesn't, like, the original Ultra 7 just use, like, the thing on his head? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, literally, they took Zero's Zero slugger and turned it into a weapon for Ultra well, 7. Well, Zero has two sluggers. I know. But, yeah, it is designed to look more like Zero, like... I don't know, it's like, a com- it's like a good combination of both. So he has that and a katana. That's fucking awesome. Oh, man. I think, from, from what I read of the manga, which is the first 23 chapters, I didn't really see a whole lot of this guy. Hmm. But luckily, I will announce it right now. I actually do have another show in the works. Mm-hmm. Uh, so before the anime comes out, I do have a quick little show about... Talking about like the volumes of ultra of the Ultraman manga, since the chapters are really short, can easily cover one volume in one episode. Mm-hmm. It'll just be me because I know Lane doesn't have the time. Mm-hmm. In which, like, just to refresh my memory as well. Yeah. Hey, that, that's that's fucking awesome, man. Yeah. I bet the figure art looks even better. Mm, I don't know. That still looks pretty good though. Yeah. So it's. So this figure is already out, came out January 26th, so like a few days ago, and it is, and the price for it is 4,860 yen. So it's like $60. Yep, and that is including tax. Yep. Man, I wish I knew about this figure. Oh, it has an LED unit to freaking light the eyes up on the head. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Oh. Yeah, no, that's, that's dope. Hey, he's... Build it yourself. <laughs> Build it yourself. You lazy fuck. Yeah, and it's like I also love how it's not even called Ultra Seven; it's Ultraman Suit Version Seven Point Five. Yep. Because remember, in this universe, there was no Ultra Seven or any of the others, just Ultraman. Just Ultraman. And Zafi. Yep. Zafi's cool. Because you know, Zafi. 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 All right, and the next news article is about the upcoming uh, Ultraman Suit A version, uh, the figure rise of the Ultraman Ace model kit. He looks cool. He does look cool. Kind of like a alien design a bit. I like that he doesn't have a mouth either. Mm-hmm. It like again, it just looks like Tony Stark fucking met Ultraman and then just decided to make an Iron Man suit based around Ultraman's design. Hmm. Holy shit, that's cool. Yeah. It's got like a Popeye arm. <laughs> what the fuck's that? Oh, it's the LED switch. Oh, okay. So it gets in the chest. Oh. That 
that's cool. Yeah, no, that's a really cool suit. I like that. Yes, and this is called the Ultraman Suit A. So yeah, it's coming out <clears> in <throat> May, and it's the same price for 800 yen, so it's going to be like 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it comes with an original weapon, it comes with two original weapon gauntlets, a vertical Gatling effect part. No, oh, a guillotine. Oh, guillotine. Yeah, it's like those things that like chop your head off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's probably that. Yeah. Uh, a beam generator part. And a display pedestal. Yeah, so it comes with a display stand. So you can like, go schwa and stuff. Sha! Yeah. <sighs> yeah, and then there's also advertisements for Ultraman Ultras and Ultraman Suit 7.5. I might pick these up one day. If I find them, I'll pick them up. Yo, can we have Belial in this show? In which I'll. I'll if I have, if I, if I am gonna pick these up, I, I should probably get on that before the anime comes out. Cause you, you know, media, when it comes out, everyone's obsessed over it. I'm expecting like fifty people at Anime North this year to be like, "Oh, I love Ultraman. Oh, cool." Which, You're like, do you really? Do, do, do you really? Come to get our podcast. <laughs> oh, here's a podcast. What's yeah. a Jenga? It's Ginga. What's Orb? <laughs> What's Rob? Oh, have you guys covered the original Ultraman series? Actually, yes, we will be at that time. Have you have you covered Geed? You mean Geed? What about Ultraman R slash B? R and B? Anyways, let's... X on to X. So, I think I found probably my, like, one of my favorite episodes of this entire show. Oh, it's because, is it because it's about, uh, Captain Kamiki? No, it's just, this is a really fucking amazing episode. Like, it was just really good, really personal, and it just was paced very nicely. Mm -hmm. It had one of my favorite kaijus in it. Gomez. Yeah. Like, I looked at it, like, because he showed up, and I, like, uh, oh yeah, so we're talking about episode 15, A Soldier's Back. Yeah. So, yeah, so, like, Gomez shows up, and I was just like, I was like, I was like, oh yeah, it's Gomez. And then, like, the one was like, oh yeah, it's Gomez. And I'm like, ah, I did. See, I know my kaijus now. <laughs> I know Gomez when I see it. But they all don't look alike now. Like, Godzilla sped up roar, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh yeah, so also my King Joe vinyl came in, and it's nice. Cause I, I love King Joe. Yeah. Every time he shows up, he's just fucking super powerful. But yeah, this was a Captain Kamaki focus episode. Which is cool because you know we don't know anything about him. Like even Asuna said, it's like, wait, he went out? Like I swear he lived here. I think she was kind of joking about that as well. I don't know. I think so. I think it was like half joke. It's like when it's like when young kids think teachers live at the school. Uh, so we find out that he has a daughter. Yeah, uh, not just any daughter. A daughter old enough to get married. Yeah, but she's getting married tomorrow. Finally getting married. <laughs> So, yeah, so, like, we kind of go into his past a bit, and we find out that, like, oh, j typical, oh, the mother was sick, has deadly ill, and she passed away, and, like, you know, Kamiki was always, like, prioritizing his job over his family, because, you know, because even the mother said it to, to his daughter, just being like, if your father doesn't go, lots of people are going to be hurt. So, many boffins died to get this information. Coming soon, Rogue Two, The Many Boffins. <laughs> I want that movie. The Many Boffins. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so he gets an invitation from his daughter saying like, you know, please come to my wedding if you can. In which she even put, or like, when she uh, sent the inv invite to him, uh, she even specified that it was urgent. Yeah. So it's like, just he opens it up, it's like, it's like it's the wedding invitation, but like there was a sticky note on it being like, please, "Wedding's tomorrow." Yeah, please come if you can. Yeah, in which, you know, Captain Tachibana comes up to him and be like, "Hey, 
like, go. go. I'll, I'm here. I'll handle if Gomez shows up again. So he's just like, oh, we, we like, got this. Like, oh, I don't know. Like, you know, I should be here. And she's like, yeah, we got this. And then, so then she decides to tell, like, everyone else, the entire CEO crew, and they're just like, holy shit, wait, he has a life? Is this his daughter? <laughs> then you just have Talker and Chiaki in the corners. Do we get character development? No, 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 no. You stay in the you corners. Sit, or you sit the fuck down, just like that, and he points the gun at him. Okay. <laughs> so then, uh... Hey, can I get a focus episode? Shut up, Talker. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You know what? I want that to be a pair, again, a bridge parody. Just whenever they speak, somebody just bad mouths. <laughs> yeah. Uh, monster sighting into Area 2, but you shut the fucking mouth. <laughs> shut your fucking mouth, Talker. No. Oh, sorry. I just do my dog. I don't fucking care. You shut up. <laughs> just pretend. You just go on your computer and pretend you're doing stuff. Oh, sure. Dark Thunder energy coming. Dark Thunder energy coming. <laughs> That's what you sound like. <laughs> you guys shut up. <laughs> And just like the girls, just like. We, we, because they don't. Honestly. We're all they do is just yell shit that we already know that we see on screen. There's fi- that's all it is. We're on episode 15. There's only 22 episodes of X. So that's like, let's see here 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. That is seven episodes away from the finale. And they have done nothing. Yeah, so they probably wouldn't get like a quarter of an episode that came to them. I don't even think they do. Probably fucking. Who knows? Whoa. Uh, so he it's kind of kind of he decides to go see his daughter, where she works at a car dealership. Not just any car dealership, Nissan. Yeah. Well, I think it was called like, the Jump Car Dealership or something. Well, there was a Nissan logo. Yeah, no, I saw. It. Well, duh, all their fucking vehicles are Nissans. Uh, just, just. All right, we need to take the cars in for repair. You know what? Bring the camera as well. We'll film an episode. So like. Yeah, so, like, it, it's adorable seeing, like, Kamaki trying to, like, be a father, because he's just standing there going, like, well, don't you, like, don't people usually, like, take, like, time off before, like, a wedding happens? And she's like, well, nah, like, they, my fiancé's parents are fucking prepping everything, so kind of yeah. okay. And you, and he loves his family. A lot. And he's just like, there's a lot of tension here. Yeah, and then she's just like, well, anyways, I have to go back to work. And then, like, you know, he stops her and just goes like, hey, like... There's a kaiju coming, and let me guess, other people are going to get hurt. Unless you go, unless you um, go and do something about it. And he's like, yeah. You know what? I may not like it, but I understand. But it's like, just like, it sucks. Like, it hurt, it hurt him, because it's just <laughs> like... It's like, that's her big day. Like... Like it is the day that she will never forget. All she wants is her dad to be there. Yeah. And it's just. So then. Like she's roughly like, gotta be at least like in her twenties. Yeah, like I'd say like maybe twenty. Yeah. So it's like, that's that's a long time. Yeah. And, and I'm also kind of glad that she's not like mad at her dad. It's just, she's just kind of like. <sighs> she dismisses him. Yeah. Because it's like you know her mother died. Her father's the only person she has left for family. Mm -hmm. So, like, and when her father's not paying attention to her, when she, when, like, she needed him the most, he wasn't there. So, that's why she's probably happy she's getting married, because now she'll have this new family that she can, like, you know, love her and be with her whenever. And name her George. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so, yeah, so then, like... Tachiman's just like, go. Go to the wedding. Like, we'll take care of it. We'll handle whatever situation happens. And, like, they're all, like, like, like... You only... She only has one dad. Yeah. And, like, Daichi... Daichi and everyone's just like, go. And they're like... He's like, all right. So then he goes, and but then he has, like, this weird suspicion. So then he comes back, and they're all just looking at him like, what the fuck? We just had this emotional moment. We're not doing this again. Yeah, and so he's just like, no, I had a strong feeling... Yeah, it, just, it was, here. yeah, it was just dark thunder energy coming down to make Gomez more powerful. Yeah, and super Gomez. Net, 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 now he's Gomez with red eyes. Yeah, super Gomez. <laughs> super Gomez. So then, uh, oh yeah, and like previously when they were fighting, like Ultraman, uh, like X tried fighting him and he got his ass kicked because like this wasn't powerful enough. Like, well, that's what happens when you don't go exceed right away. <laughs> what did we learn, X? Go final form uh, on the first try. Go final form on the first hit. Yeah, Eisen, Eisen would fucking have something to say about that. 
If you were still around. But no, if Eisen, no, if Eisen was around, he would actually fail X because you know, oh, you went to your, you went straight into your final form. Yeah, exactly. Minus twenty points. Yeah, exactly. Um, Eisen knows the tropes. That's why he got fired. Yep. Um. So then, yeah. So Gomez like attacks and stuff like that, and then they just like they all just like I've never seen Zio just like s- just deploy so fucking fast. Like, they were just like like, freaking Muskei goes out just shooting them. They're all shooting with ultra lasers like a bazooka and stuff. And I'm like, oh my oh, oh, yeah. god. Apparently that's, yeah, that, apparently that is called the Zeo Bazooka. Yeah. Nice name. <laughs> Every faint has Zeo in it. So then, like, yeah, Daichi goes X or whatever like that. And then, like, they try to, like, summon uh, Cyber Gomera. But, like, uh, some buildings, like, collapse around them. And so, like, shit. What do we do? We need our swords. <laughs> so at the same, so at the same time, um, Captain Kamaki, or well, his daughter's getting married. Oh yeah. And then just like you know, you hear like the the wedding song, like the yeah, da, or, or, or like you know, like the whole yeah. I I don't know the name and of just the song. Out of nowhere, you just see Captain Kamaki just like fucking walk out fully equipped in armor, summons Cyber Gomera, and then just gets into like a boxing stance. And he just starts boxing as Cyber Gomera, and it's the fucking coolest shit ever. And just like the wedding song is still playing, like she's still like walking yeah. down the aisle. And yeah, stuff. it's it, it's one of those like like heartwarming montages where it's like they're doing the right thing while people are being happy. And then just yeah, and then like X goes like seed X, and then like they're fucking teaming up, they're fighting together and stuff, and just like the song's still playing. And then just like you know, you know what a good example would be from Anchorman two, when uh, Ron, oh, the, the, yeah, the, yeah, when Ron, Ron Junior's having this re- just recital. Yeah, when he's at his recital and like there's just the giant news fight in the park <laughs> with all the celebrities. Oh, it's so funny! Like Liam Neeson and Jim Carrey and, Will and John C. Riley as the ghost of Stonewall. Stonewall Jackson. <laughs> there's so much we can learn from. <laughs> Why do we have to do this? <laughs> um. So then, and then we just, like, they finish him off, and then just, like, we just see, like, Gomez, like, exploding, and Kamaki just, like, turns around, and as it like, explodes into, like, fireworks. Yeah, it's like, as, like, the particles become a spark doll, he just charges off to the altar, where he is, unfortunately, late. Too late, but then you just see an arm kind of, like, grab him, and it's his daughter, and she's like, glad you came, and then proceeds to walk her down the aisle and I was just like ah like I was actually hoping like oh it was gonna be like one of those like the real ceremony yeah that would have been sweet I was expecting it to be like the like the reveal to be like like when she heard the knock on the door and it's like as she's walking by it's just you see her dad come up in like full tuxedo yeah it's like hey at least he tried yeah and you know what that's all she cared she was like she was happy he at least tried to be there. So Or at least think of it this way. He took on the kaiju by himself to make sure his daughter had the perfect day. Yep. So it was just what a badass motherfucker. We also see what's actually in his jacket, because sometimes in the show he actually holds his side. Yeah, and he has a drawing that his daughter made of like him and and of her and uh, her mom. And like it was like a sad face yeah. and what she's like, This is what I do. This is, this is why I do this. This is why I stay here 24-7. Yeah. It hurts me to go so, home. So, like, Captain Kamaki, you are a fucking badass motherfucker. Way better captain than whatever his name was in Ginga S. I don't even remember his name. Exactly. <laughs> this guy is so cool. And the best part is, this guy was played by the same dude who played Tachibana in Amazons and Dr. Maki in O's. Right. Yeah. So, like, this guy's already... This guy's a fucking great actor. Oh. So, like... That's what I love about him. I hope he shows up in a Sentai. That'd be sick. Oh, I want him to be a mentor. Full circle. Just come complete circle. I want him Have to... him be fucking Sizor, whatever the fuck his name is. Oh, not Korag? Yeah. <laughs> not not Wolzard? Yeah. Wolzard 2.0? Wolzard 2.0. That's what everybody's been saying. It's just... 
It's Walsar. Well, he's purple. He has a sword and shield. He's part of the villains. So yeah. <laughs> and just the funniest thing is that like I've heard nobody complain about that. It's just it's Korag. Well, again, awesome. Again, this is them playing safe, being like, oh, oh what, what do people like? Uh, people like Walsar, right? In Magic, yeah. yeah. Purple armor, short shield guy. Yeah, everyone love that. Yeah. No oh. stop. No stop. No um, but overall, like honestly, this was a fantastic episode of fucking X. Oh. Like. It- this show is really, really good. And you want to know what the next episode's about? What? You, you know the show Cops, right? Yeah. Imagine Cops, but with the crew of Ultraman X. That's awesome. Yeah. So, like, it's like a handheld camera? Yes. Like, That's awesome! <laughs> ah, I can't wait! Yeah. And, of course, Daichi's Monster Lab is about the ancient monster Gomez. Gomez. And which, what's his special attack? Nothing. Is, he, he doesn't really have... Like, well, like he, shoots, he shoots like a purple like beam. Well, that well that was with the dark thunder energy. Oh. by himself. He, he just fights. He, yeah, he's just imagine Godzilla without the atomic breath. Okay. And then the cyber card is Gomez. Yep, it's an ancient monster with incredible strength. It was powered up by the dark thunder energy and gained the ability to fire a high power laser beam. He has a freaking laser beam. Anything else about this episode? Uh, oh, the opening ending changed to the second verse. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, Bleh. and like it shows like the ca- whole cast or whatever like that. They're just in pictures going like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that was cute. But yeah, no, like this was definitely one of my favorite episodes of X because like I like that we like it got very personal and we got to like find out about like. You know the character who leads everyone in this in this organization. So. Like, like just because he's the leader doesn't mean he doesn't have problems. Yeah. Of his own. Yeah, he just keeps them keeps them to himself. Balled up because I'm the leader. I gotta make sure everybody's okay. I gotta make sure everybody's good. All right, shall we access flashes into SSSS Gridman? Yes. <laughs> So, guard, you still hate it? Okay, so last time we talked about SSS Gridman, that was back in like what November it was? Um, November, something like that. October. The extra thick power hour. Yep. Uh, With episode fifty-eight, Gridman Extra Thick Power Hour. Where we talked about the first three episodes of SSS Gridman, and if you listen to that episode, I did not like the episodes. No. Not one bit. But, I, since we were talking about it again, and this time we're actually going to finish the show, all 12 episodes, I decided to maybe, just to refresh my memory on the first three episodes. So, in which my opinion has changed. Because remember, there's a difference between opinion and first viewing. Mm-hmm. Or like, for, like, yeah. like first, first reaction over opinion. Mm-hmm. So episode one, the animation in the first act was very clunky. It felt like it was missing some like important keyframes. Um, the pacing was very slow, like slower than usual. <laughs> but it's the first episode, so I'll let it slide. Mm-hmm. But I wish there was just more dynamic shots of like the city or like just. The school overall, not just uh, the border sign. Like, just notes everywhere. It's like, come on. It's a school. Where are the teachers? Where are the students? Yeah. Um, there's one scene that I really hate where it just, it stalls for so long. Because <laughs> it's like, um, the volleyball chick. Um, oh, what's her name? Sa- uh, Sakiru. She hits the special hot dog in which, oh my goodness, that's a reference to the original Gridman now. Yeah. Uh, she hits it with her volleyball and just the camera zooms out as everyone's just with a blank expression. It's like, okay, all just for the PA to go be like, oh yeah, somebody come to the office. There's an important call for you. It's like, where's the cut? <laughs> uh... This is my biggest nitpick, though, about the uh, about this show so far. Actually, two nitpicks. One, the lack of music. I will never get over that. It's just the show needs more than just battle music, or like 
shocking music. It just it needs music to like to express how it's actually feeling. Honestly, I'm used to it by now, so. Mm. Uh, and the second biggest nitpick that I have about the show is that they never that the characters nor the actual show tell us the kaiju's names like how, how do the first how do episodes of the original Gridman start out with um they like they make it well besides that um like are you talking about how the kaijus are born okay so so basically sorry sorry I, I should have told you about this a bit more but that once the opening's over with gives you the title of the episode and then the like what the kaiju's name is that's appearing in the episode mm. and it's like like introducing and it's like the actual monster's name here it's just it's a kaiju you want to know the actual name of it go google it, go wiki it. yeah go wiki it yeah the only kaiju we actually know is anti yeah. which Oh boy, somebody's gonna be important. They actually got named. Yep. <laughs> uh, so you know. Yeah, yeah, you know something's important when it actually gets named. Uh, the only good thing that I liked about the first episode was actually the third act, where, you know, when Gridman was a key important character. Yeah, he's purple. Also, don't don't listen to the dub. Nope. Everybody talks like this. Nobody expresses emotion. You and me are in the same class, but we don't speak to each other. The grim is just like Utah. Hey, Utah. No, I, since, since he's voiced by the same VA that did Android 16, I just think of Team Four Star now. <laughs> Hello there, Utah. I am Gridman. Do you like birds? I have no memory. But I do like birds. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, episode 2, Restoration. Um, the music is getting a bit better. Like, there's some key elements. But there's one scene that I wish that it worked with a bit more, and that was the introduction to Samurai Caliber. Because he just shows up, there's no music. It would have been cool to have some, like, some eerie music. Be like, oh no, is, is he a threat or something? You see him goof up, and it's like, oh, no, he's, he's just an ordinary dude. <laughs> I love Caliber. And uh, if, if I was writing the show a bit, I would probably save Caliber's, like, reveal that he becomes a sword until the next episode. Mm. That way we at least see Gridman, like, okay, now that he's at full power, let's see what he can actually do. Yeah. And then next episode, oh boy, this kaiju's a bit more tougher. And it's like, okay, I got you. And then sword. Yeah. And then just gradually show, like, the other characters. Uh, also, there was a good Rika subplot, and Akane's reveals the villain is, uh, yeah. we only got 12 episodes. Yeah. If, if this was, like, a 25-episode series, we probably wouldn't get that reveal until, like, episode 10. Uh, episode 3 was also, like, pretty good, but did have some hit and miss there, which, it, that leads to the whole Neon Jazz and Junior High School students, where... They didn't really, like, they just showed up. It's like, no intro. It's like, this is a tokusatsu anime. To in toku, characters get, like, a big reveal, or they get an entire episode for themselves. Yeah. Not just, hey, we're all here. I can't believe, I can't believe the drill one is a guy. It's anime. No, but it looks like a girl. I know it does. But according to all the sources, Bor is a guy. Okay. It's not weird, but just like, um. Well, anyways, with that, uh, so first three episodes, they're, they're okay. All they say that, they're not bad. They're all right. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a little rough start. But yeah. Then, like, once you get probably like up to episode five, then it's like you know, you know these characters, you know how you know how the tone of the show is, you know it's kind of humorous and. Oh no! If it's a twelve episode series, they gotta get their act together by episode six. Yeah. If nothing's happening past episode six, there is a problem. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, episode four, 
Sus- suspicion. So, you know what? I'm also adding that to a nitpick. Why is every episode only just one word? Oh no, that's fucking Disney Power Rangers. It's like all the episodes are one word, then two, then three, and another three words in another season. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean with SVD, Mystic Force, and Overdrive? Yeah. Then Jungle Fury was four? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the subplot of this episode essentially is that there's this radio show with, like, four college dudes, and they want to, like, date some high school students or something, so, like... I don't know, they, they never really... So, well, that, that's the thing. So, like, Rika and her friends, like, wanted to go, like, out with these college guys, and then they're like, okay, well, there's, like, oh, Rika, you gotta come with us, and she's like, oh, okay, and then Akane's like, oh, no! We told them that there was gonna be four of us, that way we can have a gangbang! Well, they just went and did karaoke. And yeah. And the Connie had to leave because she was getting really unfucking comfortable. Uncomfortable, and they were making fun of a thing that we'll bring up. Yeah, so. But yeah, just. Akane thinks Yuta is Gridman, in which she even. Like, Alexis, like, brings up. It's like, oh, why do you think he's Gridman? He randomly. Le- like, this guy in a black jacket came into our school. Took him and Utsumi, left, and then Gridman showed up. He's probably Gridman. He's probably Gridman. Alright, he's ac- she's actually smart for a Toku villain. She might actually know who these people are. I gotta say, though, I really fucking hate her, like, pretending personality, where she pretends to be the popular girl in school. Because, like, I, just, just... deep in the back of her fucking mind, she's just, like, anything that bad happens or something she doesn't like, she's just like, fuck off. But then it's like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's like, Don't worry about me. It's like, with, at least with Takashi, like... He's just straight up, it's just like, fuck you. Yeah, he, no, and he's brainwashed. Also, he's not the most popular guy in school. Yeah, yeah, he's the kid that nobody notices. Yeah, but in terms of this show, it's just like, you know, oh, she's like the most popular girl in school, but then... As Raven explained, she's a closet otaku, and she, you know she has a huge fucking collection of kaiju. She has garbage bags everywhere in her room. Which and she like okay, oh, okay, five like three garbage bags. Okay, that's a lot. There was like at least twenty garbage bags. Yeah, and when you see episode one, because I, I accidentally watched episode five because I thought we were talking about the episodes. Literally, her entire room is just for floors garbage bags. Like it's just. Her, her computer desk, her chair, what she's sitting on, and then the rest of her fucking room is just garbage. Is she's there not no, taking out. Is there no garbage day? I don't know. She's too lazy to take it out. Where are her parents? Yeah, probably away. Probably overseas. Also, have you noticed that there's not really a whole lot of other people in this reality? Or, like, in this show? No. It's probably, like, a fixed city or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's, like, fuck. Uh, so, anyways... Um, oh, what's so, like, it's, it's like Westworld. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh, Utsumi's, like, thinking about fucking, uh, Akane and stuff like that. And then wait, wait, like, like, literally, he's thinking about fucking Akane. Well, I'm not fucking her, but it's like, he wants to go on a date with her. And, like, uh, fucking Yuta's just like, I thought you hate her. No, I didn't say I hate her. I said she's very unapproachable. Because she's popular. <laughs> but damn, she hot. <laughs> So then, like, Gridman is just, like, oblivious to what the fuck they're talking about. And he's just like... So it's like, hey, it's like Gridman? Oh, we, should, we should go, we should go, like, follow them or whatever like that in secret to make sure everything goes so all right. And he's like, yeah, that's a good idea. And Gridman's just like, yes, you should always fight your enemies. Never be afraid to take them head on. And, and like, and so he's like, fuck, even Gridman agrees we should fucking follow them. And it's like, what do you think, Gridman? Always eat your vegetables. Th- th- thanks. Thanks, Gridman. Do you like birds? <laughs> Also, this is really funny when, like, he's, like, not aware of what's going on sometimes. Like, apparently he can look anywhere in the room, because, like... Well, yeah, he's... So, yeah, in episode four, they start to, like... The show decides to, like, sprinkle around the idea that Gridman is a 3D animated character in the computer. Because, like, he looks over to the right, and he's, like... Because, like... Because, like, you're just sitting right on, like, the left side of the monitor or whatever like that. And, yeah. like, Gridman's literally looking at him as if he can see him from the side. But you shouldn't be able to. Because it's like, you're just looking, like, you should be all only able to see who's ever in front of the monitor. 
Mm -hmm. So because we've even seen shots of the computer screen from yeah. like his perspective, yeah. it's like a circular. It's like, a, like yeah, it's a square box. Like you can't see that part, but it looks like he's just looking over, talking to him. I'm like, how do you see him? Uh, also, I'll admit, Red Man being CG while everyone else is being drawn 2D, it doesn't look good. I don't mind it. It's it's to differentiate them. Oh well, yeah, you know they're 2D. Red Man's from the computer world. So. And, but but I do find that funny. It's that I find it a bit eerie. Though I grew up watching Transformers Cybertron, where all the humans were 2D and all the Transformers were C like were 3D models. Yeah. But this show, it's like, oh no, that's just weird. This is like really weird. This is like watching Gumball. Also, it's fucking cool seeing like Optimus Prime voiced by Gary Chalk. But then he had like Optimus Primal's like head. And I was like, yeah, because it's Gary Chalk Optimus Prime. Also, Dan, is there a lot of Transformer references in this show? Speaking of Transformer Cybertron, uh, one of Rika's friends, uh, Namoki, I think her name is, mm -hmm. yeah, or Namiko. Uh, she has a little hair clip in her hair. It looks like the uh. The cyber key for the speed planet. Oh. Yeah, like I'll, I'll show you. Like uh. Uh, but yeah, like another thing as well is like uh, one of the college students like looks over at Connie, Connie's phone, and notices like she has like a like an avatar sticker. Oh shit, that's cool. Um, yeah, I like this, I like I always like the cyber planet keys. Oh yeah, they were. I loved the concept of them. Um, and she has an alien Bolton. Yeah, she has, like, an alien Bolton as, like... Her, her like, like, sticker what, avatar like, or something. Yeah, like, one of her yeah, avatars like, for, like, a WhatsApp and, and, like, something. So, like, deep down, like, she loves, like, alien Bolton or whatever like that. But, like, she's like, oh, I just yeah, found it. Oh, it's cool. And I'm just like, so Ultraman exists in the Crimson universe? I'm like, okay. Every universe is connected somehow. <laughs> yes. Um... So then, yeah, so she gets, like, kind of, like, run the wrong way and gets made fun of and stuff, and then, like, she kind of gets pissed off. Like, leaves. It, 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 so she leaves, goes back, and is just, like, finds, like, Auntie, whatever, like that, and it's just, like, Yeah, Auntie's like, just Auntie, waiting at the gate. I need you to kill these four dudes. I only care about killing fucking Gridman. And it's, like, I won't kill anyone else, but Grid fucking tosses, throws her phone at him, just right in the fucking face. <laughs> You're broken. Yeah, well, because, like, that's his sole purpose. He, he was made specifically to destroy Gridman. So that's all he fucking cares about. So, like, later on in the episode or whatever like that, like, there's another kaiju that, show, that she makes that shows oh, up. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, what's its name? What's its name? I don't fucking know it didn't tell us in the episode. All right, so the kaiju of this week's episode is called The Morning Cloud Monster Gong Lee. Okay. Um, that makes no sense. All right. So then, um, especially since it attacked at night, but it's called the morning monster. So, like, they look at the so then the next day or whatever like that. Rika's like watching the show at the restaurant with her friends or whatever, and like it's like, oh, I thought they were like four of them. No, he's always Arcadia's always been one guy. That's like fucking hell, and like that. I love she just immediately picks it. It's like fuck, kaiju. It, it's Damn awful too, like, the, like one of the one of the guys who got like axed or whatever, like he gets like a phone call from one of his friends. He's just like, ah, what's happening? Ah! And you just hear him like getting murdered on the phone. Stupid prank call. What the fuck was that about? And then just gets cornered in an alley, gets killed by Anti. Well, not Anti, Gong Li. Oh, it was Gong Li. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because remember, Anti doesn't. Anti doesn't care. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> All he cares about is Gridman. Oh yeah, and then so then Rika goes to find the other guy. And it was actually really funny. Like, she tries to leave her friends. And she's like, oh, I just remembered I have an errand after run. I'm going to go. And it's like, oh, I remember. I just remembered I had an errand after run. Was this a drama? <laughs> so I thought that was fun. So, like, I like I like this show's attempt at humor. Because, it's like, it's kind of like... Because I, 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 was, I was thinking about it, too. It's like Gridman. Like, because Gridman does that, too. It has this weird, silly fucking subplot. Like, you know, one of the previous episodes we talked about. It was just... One of the characters complained that he was fucking hungry the entire goddamn episode. Yeah, Ife was hungry the entire episode. Yeah, so that that's where that's where SSS Gridman takes its humor from is from the original 
Or it just had like a yeah yeah it just had a subplot yeah there you go it fucking reference Bolton again it's like Jesus Christ um yeah so then like Riku Rika finds like the other guy and then she's he's just kind of like oblivious and like he's like oh yeah let's go somewhere alone she's like it's not about that but yeah let's go somewhere alone that doesn't sound good <laughs> yeah so then uh like the kaiju finds him and tries to get him but then uh. Cal- Cal- Caliber comes in and saves saves them. Because Soul Leader called. And, and it's really awesome. Like uh, afterwards, like they try the tentacles again, and just Gridman just comes out and just fucking catches them, and it's just like whoa shit. And just like you see Angie just be like, Gridman, just fucking transform. Gridman, like take yell like yells at the other guy, just like fuck you, Gridman's mine. And just fucking like except, and then they start fighting, and then like it seems like oh. Oh, the guys have fucking shit for each other, and it's like, ooh. And then just like it, it's just so funny how Angie just wants to defeat Gridman. So then it's like, oh shit, two versus one, that's not fair. And then like, so the weapons are like, oh well, there's four of us. Uh, all right, let's all go in at once. For, literally, the computer freezes because they can't handle all four at once. Well, there's five. Well, think of it. There's five of them. Yeah. The f- like- and, and Junk's like a powerful but also a shitty computer. Junk can barely function Gridman at full power. Yeah. <laughs> Try running five other programs at the same time. So it's so like, fucking it, it, it froze or whatever like that. And Riku's just like, okay. <laughs> Unplugs it. What the fuck are you doing? Well, we'll just reset it. Start it. No, you can't. That's not how computers work. turn on. Okay, let's just kick it. Yeah, you can't kick it. It's on fucking CRT. C- comes back on. They all get transported back into the office, the shop. And it's just like. <laughs> Like what the fuck happened? Yeah, if the, I guess it can't handle all four of us at once. If there was, if this was like an American adaptation, just do the exact same thing. Like she unplugs it, plugs it back in, and it's like it's not turning on. She just kicks it. Everybody comes back out. Just pull Fonzie. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and then so then Rika asks, it's like, all right, which one of you of the four is the strongest? And they all just kind of just stare blankly at her, just being like, yeah, just all look at Max. Just well, no, they're all looking like being like. Who's the strongest of us? Oh, I thought they were just looking at Max, because, you know, Max is the big guy of the group. Yeah, but no, it's kind of, I think it's, I think it was like a joke on, like, how they were all thinking, uh, I'm the strongest. Because <laughs> they oh. all think they're the strongest. Oh, yeah, there's a, there's a subplot in this episode involving Yuta, because they, they, Yuta and Utsumi kind of stalk the group date that, uh, Rika and Akane are <laughs> on. Because they're at, like, a karaoke place. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, alright, we gotta go find them. Caliber just kicks the door down and looks in. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, we're supposed to be looking for them. Dude, you're doing this all wrong. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, when Akane leaves, Utsumi is like, well, I'm done. And then everyone else just kind of goes with him. Yeah. And like, Yuta kind of ends up just being all by himself until Max shows up. And he's like, so why did you want to do this? Well, no, no reason. I just want to know. Because like, Yuta thinks that, uh, a Yuta thinks Rika's into older guys. Yeah. In which, then, it's like, you like her, don't yeah, you? Yeah, Max is like, you like her, don't you? No. No, you, so, you like her, don't you? Like, probably? Yeah. Come on, say it. It's not like I like Yuta, Baka. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, What's his... So now, it's, so now it's just like a recurring thing where just like, he'll just like stare at Rika and she's like, what? And he's like, oh, nothing. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, we also find out Gridman doesn't have his memories. No, he's just like, all I know is, I need to protect the city from kaijus. That's nice to know, Gridman. So then, Where's your other Gridman? So then they, uh, he goes, he goes Max Gridman, and it's my favorite form. It's fucking awesome. I love it. How do they beat the kaiju? Uh, they kick! Yeah, apparently Max has the abilities to turn, like, the tires inwards into his arms. Fly upwards and like rider kick the kaiju, yeah. which the kaiju kind of remind me of a uh, twin tail a bit from Return of Ultraman. Yeah, because it was like one of those kaiju's where it's like it doesn't really have a body. It's like the heads at the bottom where it's like it has a giant tail that goes upwards. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just like the fight was really awesome and just like, and Anti's just so pissed off they can't. <laughs> All right, now that he defeated the kai, defeated that kaiju, it's my turn to fight. Immediately reverts back to human form. Damn. Um, and then yeah, 
it just like it ends with like Yuta just asking Rika. It's like, hey, do, do you want to go for food? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know where we'd be able to fit all of us though. Like, we'd probably have to do buffet. And she's like, she's like, oh, for fuck's sake. Damn, I should have specified. Um, so this is, a, I, like I said, I've been enjoying this anime. I really like it, so. Like, I like the humor, I like the characters, I like the fights, the fights are awesome. Yeah, episode four was a real, like, it was a good episode. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed it. And, like, th- that would probably just be my overall thought on SSS as Gridman. It was good. Yeah. That would probably be, like, the be-all, end-all of my result. Just, how was it? It was okay. Uh, oh, yeah, so the next week we get the, like, kind of beach episode. The, the quote-unquote beach episode. So, aka, we get to see Rika and Akane in fucking hot-ass bikinis. So, yeah. Because, of course. This is all no, I'm in the cult of Rika. Like we, we never came up with a thumbnail. I don't know. I got one. I got an idea. Okay. I, I think you'll like it. All right. Alright, uh, so that was episode 67 of Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger, Grammy. Grammy. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Granime. And uh, next week, we'll, again, if Rube's not subbed, we'll just keep talking about Ultraman X and SSS Gridman. There you go, motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, that's... That was a call for, Lane. Ooh! Well, yeah. Let me just have all in our notes, just like... If subbed. Yeah, yeah, just if subbed. Uh, so that's it, everyone. That's all she wrote? I'm gonna go play more Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3 came out this week. Yes! So I Best game ever. So I am now living the life of a Kingdom Hearts character where this entity from another world showed up and stole all my friends. Yep. Gotta believe in your heart, Gar. It's in your heart. My heart's frozen over by all the weather. Oh. Schwa for now. Schwa for now, everybody. Hey, everyone. Thank you for listening to this episode of Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger. We appreciate your dedication to listening. If you have an opinion on the news or shows we talked about, leave a comment down below. Hashtag comments for Lane. If you want to check us out on other social media pages, you can check out our Twitter pages. As always, you can follow me at twitter.com slash You can follow me at twitter.com slash lane double underscore. For other pages, you can find my blog, Gar's Toku Blogs, on facebook.com. And while you're on Facebook, why not give Radio Sentai Cast Ranger a follow? For older episodes of our shows, you can find them at castranger.podbean.com. And we also have some merch, such as t-shirts and bags, available at tpublic.com. That's all for this exciting episode of Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger. Until next time, schwa for now!